My three-year-old little brother is actually my fiance's child. Yes, I know this is really messed up, I'm aware. My fiance and I are 24 and 25. We've been together since we were about 17, 18 years old. And he's always been handsome, funny, kind, all of good, the good things. Everyone's always said that I'm so lucky to have the full package. I really felt so lucky too. He always treated me with love and respect. So this is why this is just so shocking for me to even find out at this point. I have always had such a good relationship with my mom. It's always been her and I against the world. My dad unfortunately died in an accident when I was little, but me and my mom have always joked that we're the real life Rory and Lorelai from Gilmore Girls. My mom dated guys on and off and they were usually really cool, but nothing ever ended up passing the early stages of the relationship. Around four years ago, my mom told me that she was pregnant, which was a huge surprise to me. My mom was 42 years old at the time, and although she had been dating someone recently, I had never met the guy. It was a huge shock. She never thought that she could get pregnant at her age. She had me at a really young age. I was an accident child. I could tell that she was really stressed and worried when she told me that she was pregnant. I decided to support her since she always supported me in everything and I tried to reassure her about the whole situation. She then had my brother who is now three years old and me and my brother have always been close since he was born. I've taken care of him a lot since the day that he was born and I just love the little guy. My fiance was always super helpful with my brother. We would take him out for ice cream, pool time during the summer, playtime, but nothing was weird about this. It was just my then boyfriend helping me take care of my brother. Now to how I found out about this whole bizarre situation. Me and my fiance have lived together since we finished college. My fiance wasn't home at the time because he was hanging out with his friends and I didn't really feel like any doing anything so I just chilled out on my sofa. I was binge watching a Netflix series on my laptop when my laptop died and I didn't know where the charger was so I just ended up grabbing my fiance's iPad. I knew the password but I had never used it before and I opened it and put the password in and then all of a sudden I got all these messages pinging so I guess he hasn't used it in a while either this really got my attention so i went to check it out and that's when i found out everything my mom's phone number was not under her name but i verified it with my phone and made sure that it was the right number and it ended up being my mom my three-year-old little brother is actually my fiance's child I was telling him that she felt guilty and thought that i should know and he said he felt guilty too but he couldn't lose me and they fucked up she said that it was unfair for my brother to not know who his real dad was and asked him if he could live with the fact that he was around my little brother acting as a brother-in-law and not like his father. At that point, I literally broke down because what the actual F is going on. There weren't a lot of older messages, but there was a photo album of my brother when he was a newborn baby, my mom when she was pregnant, and just photos of my little brother growing up. I couldn't even look at it anymore and I felt like I was crying for hours at this point but I was just waiting for my boyfriend to get back home. I wish that I was one of those women that could just get everything together before confronting the cheater but I am just not. He came back later that night around 1 30 a.m and I just handed him the iPad with the conversation open and he looked at it and his face went so pale. I asked him for, for an explanation and he really didn't want to but he knew that he had to so he started to explaining to me. He said that a few years ago when I apparently was on a girl's trip, him and my mom went to dinner together, which is not abnormal at all. He's been a part of the family for so long and this would happen often somehow and he couldn't really explain it so i'm not really sure how this happened one thing just led to another i guess and they ended up sleeping together they felt really guilty but apparently not guilty enough because they did it two to three times after that using the excuse to meet up to discuss how they were going to tell me apparently once my mom got pregnant they stopped sleeping together and they decided not to tell me because my fiance couldn't lose me and my mom didn't want to lose her daughter so here we are now with two of the most disgusting humans I've ever met. Obviously, I broke off the engagement and I told my mom to never talk to me again and ended up moving in with a friend. I feel so bad for my little brother because I love him so much, but I just cannot be around him now. I really can't.
I feel like it would just remind me of all the times we talked about having kids together and we've been talking about having our future together since we were literally 17 years old and how I would be the mother of his child but I just feel like I can't be around my brother without thinking about how I'm taking care of his child with somebody else and it makes me want to puke. Am I the asshole for rejecting my sister's fiance's job offer and ruining everything? I'm a 23 year old female and I'm not sure if I'm the asshole in this situation. So here it goes. My sister Anna, 27 female, has always been the golden child. She's smart, beautiful, and now engaged to a wonderful guy named Mike, 29 male. Mike is the kind of guy who makes everyone feel special. I thought he was the best thing that ever happened to Anna. I couldn't be happier for her until recently. Three years ago, I started my dream job as a graphic designer at a prestigious company. It wasn't easy to get in and I had to work my ass off to prove myself. Fast forward to a few months ago, our company started a big project. I was chosen as the lead designer. This was my big break. One evening, Mike dropped by my apartment to discuss something important. I assumed it was about the wedding, but I was wrong. He told me he had a business proposal. Mike had recently started his own tech company and needed a creative mind like mine. He offered me a position as the head of design with a significant pay raise and promised equity in the company. It was tempting, but I politely declined. I love my job and I didn't want to mix family with business. I agree. Working with your family is extremely hard and if given the opportunity, I would pass on it too. Here's where things get messy. Mike didn't take my rejection well. He became pushy, trying to persuade me by any means necessary. I stood my ground thinking it was over. But then weird things started happening at work. Rumors about me slacking off and missing deadlines spread like wildfire. My boss, who had always trusted me, started questioning my work ethic. Projects were reassigned. My reputation took a big hit. Last week, I was called into a meeting with HR and my boss. They had evidence of me leaking confidential information to a competitor. I was in shock and I denied everything. They showed me emails sent from my work account, which I had never sent. I was suspended pending further investigation. Devastated, I went to Anna's place to seek comfort. As I was explaining everything to her, Mike walked in. He looked guilty and it hit me. I confronted him, demanding to know if he had anything to do with this. After a tense standoff, he admitted to hacking my email and sending those emails to sabotage me. He thought if I had no job, I'd be forced to join his company. Anna was horrified and broke off the engagement on the spot. Good shit, Anna. Good shit. Good shit. Now my family is divided. My parents are furious with Mike, but are also blaming me for provoking him by rejecting his offer. They think I should have accepted the job to keep the peace. There was no disturbance of the peace. Mike asked a question. You gave an answer. Mike should have been big enough, big man, grown ass man enough to walk the fuck away and go and find somebody else. He thought he was entitled because he was marrying your sister that you should work for him. This man would have fucked you over seven ways from Sunday if you would have went into business with him. Anna is supportive, but she's devastated. My friends are telling me to take legal action, but I'm scared of the repercussions. So Reddit, am I the asshole for rejecting my sister's fiance's job offer and causing this mess? First of all, you are not the cause of this. You do not have to accept a job offer just because somebody offers it to you. That's why it's an offer and not a demand. They can't make you do anything. He said, I just started a company and I would really like for you to work with me. You said, no, thank you. No, thank you. That's where the fuck it should have stayed. You didn't cause a mess. The person that caused the mess was the jerk that hacked into your work email and sabotaged your job. You should 100% take legal action against this man. Get this business of his destroyed. Take it the fuck apart. Put your goddamn name on it. Don't stop until you own it. This 100% needs to be put out there. Do not think that you can keep this under wraps. Fuck the repercussions. Anyone that he is potentially going into business with needs to know that he is capable of hacking into their emails and doing whatever the fuck he wants to do with them. The people that you work for, your employer, 100% needs to know that their business is in jeopardy of being hacked and all of their private information being let out to any fucking body that's willing to pay for it. Even anybody that's just willing to send out an email to receive the information. You 100% need to take legal action and make sure this shit is known. Clear your name. 
even if nothing else comes from it, clear your fucking name. This will stop you from ever working in your dream job ever fucking again. Take the fucking legal action. Take legal action. This is a situation where I advise go scorched earth. Real shit. Some, you know, I'm always one like we don't need to go scorched earth. Fuck that. I need you to tear down everything in your path. Be a woman on a fucking mission and do not stop until this man has nothing left. I'm telling you, tell your company because they have the means to sue him. They can tear him fucking apart. They can find out where this shit was signed in from and if it was hacked and all of that shit. They can find that shit out. You can't do it by yourself, but the company that you work for 100% can. Girl, scorched earth. That's my advice to you. Am I wrong for telling my husband's girl best friend that she will not be planning my baby shower? Story time. So my husband has a girl best friend who we will call... Amy. Now, despite what you may be thinking, I actually quite like Amy. Since I found out I was pregnant though, I have had a couple of issues arise when it comes to Amy. We announced our pregnancy on social media and Amy texted Steve and said, congratulations, please pass it on to the mother. The mother? Mm, okay, uh, not fan of that. And she has since been texting advice to Steve saying advice for the mother. I have a name and this sometimes includes very targeted jabs at me. Now I kept brushing this off, got to the point where Steve and Amy's conversations became less about the baby and more about me, which I was getting increasingly uncomfortable with him texting about me to another woman. I need a sponge. Why am I orange? Once everybody knew I was pregnant, I started to get on sending invites out for a baby shower. Next thing I know, I've got a text from Amy. She says something along the lines of this babe shut up you've been calling me mother for the past six months so you know shut up she basically was asking and saying how she was really wanting to host the baby shower to steve but i told her politely that my mum was wanting to plan it and she'd been really really looking forward to it but amy didn't reply to that message or maybe she's just been a little bit uh, no, she wasn't she just ignored the message and came over to my house the next day insisting that we should start planning plan who what where and why so she sits down at my kitchen table and just whips out this folder which has page after page after page of plans i was like oh i'm really sorry girl you're gonna have to leave because like my mum's already planned it amy turns around to me and says oh don't worry it'll be better if i do it strange behavior and i was like what makes you say that then she's like oh she said this with chess by the way i'm just better at cooking than your mum and your sister he looks at me she says fine but it won't be a good event. I blew up her. I told her she can leave my house. I don't want her planning skills. I don't want her advice on how to treat my own body. I just swiftly asked her to leave my house. That night, Steve's phone blew up. Amy's like to Steve, you had no right to show her the text that I had sent you. Why? Were you embarrassed by them, Amy? And she made a very clear point that she was just trying to make sure her best friend had a happy baby and a happy life. So now, honestly, I don't really know what to do because she just keeps butting in with everything. She isn't getting the message. Quite frankly, she's starting to scare me. Steve is on my side completely. You couldn't tell already. Amy's a little bit of a psycho. I am stuck on what to do. Please leave your suggestions in the comments. I think my boyfriend just left me without me knowing. Story time. So me and my boyfriend have been together for 11 years. And of course, we've had our difficulties. We've had our differences. My boyfriend hasn't been the most supportive person. But I've also not been the most supportive person either. We've just not been perfect forever. We got together when we were both 20 years old. So we've kind of just grown up together. And to be fair, during our relationship, we've had quite a few big arguments. And in our most recent argument, which was about a week and a half ago, I don't know why I'm laughing, it's not funny. Basically said some really, really hurtful stuff. I, I was basically getting a bit upset because he didn't ever want to be intimate with me. He basically didn't like that I was getting upset about this. This is, I have brought this up a few times, so I think that's why he was so upset. So he just said some extremely, extremely hurtful stuff to me. Because we have a house together, we just kind of talking, but we weren't. It was just that awkward limbo stage and neither of us wanted to apologise. And 
I was about to leave for work, I decided just to go up to him just to make sure he was okay. And he was actually saying he was okay and he was actually about to come and speak to me. So I went to work actually quite happy. I thought, oh my God, when I get home, like we're just gonna have like the loveliest, deepest conversation. But I have just finished a 14 hour shift. I am a nurse. I come home and I find a note on the door, but I just kind of leave it because I thought maybe it was like, it was in a envelope. So I thought maybe it was just post. Then I shout out, let's call him Mark. I shout out Mark. I thought maybe Mark was cooking dinner for me. Like, honestly, I just thought this was going to be such a good night. He weren't there. He was nowhere to be seen. Like, if when I say nowhere, I mean nowhere. Obviously, I tried to ring him. And then once he wasn't answering his phone, I thought, oh, okay, this isn't filling me with confidence. Anyway, so I start, like, checking his drawers and, like, his wardrobe. Nothing's in there. Everything's gone. But then it kind of hits me that there was a letter by the door. So I open the letter. And lo and behold, it is from him. Basically saying how he can't do this anymore. Basically, he owed me some money from a holiday we had booked. I'll pay you back the money somehow and that was it like we have a mortgage together he didn't mention anything about what we're doing about that and to be honest i'm just so confused like he was acting so okay morning and now suddenly where is he? i lied to a blind neighbor and told him i moved away many years ago i was standing on one of my balconies when a taxi driver was obnoxiously blowing his horn out the front and yelling for a blind man to walk toward my voice from his own townhouse that direction was toward traffic. My roommate and I went down and helped him to the taxi and scolded the driver for being so rude. I made the mistake of giving the blind neighbor my phone number so that I could give him a ride in the future. Then the phone calls came and never stopped. And when I gave him a ride, he would ask for various detours. I'm very calculated by nature. If he had told me beforehand where he wanted to go, it would be cool. But no, we'd be driving along and he'd thrown an extra two to three places on each ride. And it came to be every day that he wanted rides. And he'd even call me to remind me to give him a ride. Not that I was ever late or backed out. Finally, I had enough. So I gauged how blind he was. His response was that he was blind as a bat. A week or two after he said that, I told him I had a job interview in the next city. A week after that, I told him I got the job and was moving away in a month. After I moved away... It was strange as hell walking by him in silence as he stood on the sidewalk. Am I the asshole for throwing money at my wife's desk after she asked my daughter to pay me back? My, 50, daughter 23, and her husband married in 2020 in a very small ceremony. They weren't able to have a proper reception and invite more family and friends, so their late wedding reception was going to happen in January. The venue was booked, all catering confirmed, etc. We all wanted to contribute to the cost, so a third was paid by us, a third by my son-in-law's parents, and a third by the couple. My son-in-law passed away two months ago, and it's been awful for all of us, especially my daughter, and it breaks my heart to see her like this. We are all with her, and she is learning to stay strong. A couple of weeks ago, my wife casually mentioned that maybe I should ask my daughter to return the portion of the reception cost we contributed, since it's no longer happening. I was shocked. I told my wife my daughter is in very deep pain right now, and I'm never going to ask her for something like this. And my wife dropped the subject. More recently, she brought it up again, saying she's sure my daughter would also agree with us and that the money is ours and she doesn't have to give it back right now. Again, I told her no. I wouldn't be doing anything like that. Yesterday, I found out she called my daughter herself to talk about this. Got pretty mad and got all the cash I had lying around and threw it at my wife's desk and asked if she was happy now. She was upset and said I was degrading her when she was just trying to look out for us. I don't think I'm the asshole here, but my wife is pretty upset with what I did. So am I the asshole? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. My mother-in-law is forcing my husband to get a paternity test. Story time. So me and my husband have been married now for 11 years. And we actually fell pregnant. That smells insane. We actually fell pregnant a month after our wedding. We obviously wasted no time. And one thing I should note about my mother-in-law is she is very traditional. And I don't know why, but she just didn't like the fact we got pregnant so soon after the wedding. Because even at the timing of things, obviously I was pregnant during our wedding. But obviously found out after. And we'll call her Natalie just to make this story a bit easier for you to follow. And we'll call my husband Mark. And when we actually announced we were pregnant she had the face like a slapped ass however me and mark were super happy we we're super happy in the relationship but also with this news we really are each other's best friends and i don't know and natalie did not keep her mouth shut that she was not happy about this pregnancy she literally pulled mark aside and said he's cheated on you i don't even know where she got this from she just couldn't fathom that me and mark were very
before the wedding. We'd have a heart attack if she knew what we got up to at college. So the time came around and me and Mark had our little girl. And I know I keep saying it, but we were just so happy. And we actually decided we did only want one child. And as time went on, you would think maybe Natalie eased up her opinion because our child literally looked exactly like me and Mark. Like, I know that sounds silly because she's our child, but I look at her and sometimes I'm like, whoa, I'm looking in a mirror. So this was 11 years ago. So we are getting on now. Natalie just still can't get over the fact that we were intimate before the wedding. But me and Natalie actually had an argument not so long ago. There were a few things, to be honest. I keep thinking she's so over the top about mine and Mark's parenting. And I ended up shouting at her over dinner the other day because just telling me how to parent our kid. And during that argument, she brought up the fact that she didn't think our little girl was Mark's. And I ended up having a go at her because I was like, you've literally been saying this for 11 years. Leave it out. Mark was also kind of agreeing with me. He was just like, obviously, mum, like, no, for a fact, that kid is mine. Natalie was having none of it and she's actually started demanding that Mark gets a paternity test. Now, Mark was very much against this idea. He's saying how he just knows our daughter is mine. He doesn't have any fear in that. I said, I am totally the same way, obviously. However, if this is going to shut your mum up, I don't mind doing it under one condition. His mum needs to have absolutely nothing to do with it. I do not trust that woman. I purely think if she had anything to do with it, she would switch results somehow or manipulate the it played it to look like mark has not had our kid but i shall keep you guys updated because natalie is a lot am i the asshole for threatening my family after they insulted my wife in front of my face told her that she said after that she accepts my wife but i will end up paying too much attention to my wife instead of being with her and it's only reasonable that a brother should always be with, with his sister during her wedding i just said i will always be with her she doesn't have to worry about my wife. That's when my brothers came in. They said that I have done enough for my wife and it's time to do something for my sister. They said I should have married another woman instead of a burden. I looked at my dad and he just gave me a sign to calm down. But my mother joined as well and told me that my siblings are right. My wife shouldn't join the wedding because I won't pay attention to my siblings' wedding and keep taking care of my wife. I finally lost my cool. After hearing all this, I went sober. I said, if my wife is not invited, then I'm not invited either. I said I'm leaving. As I was going upstairs to wake my wife up and leaving, my family stopped me and said, I'm being unreasonable. I said, I'm not in the mood right now. If I hear another offensive word, I'll do something we all will regret. So I just grabbed my wife and went back home. She asked why we left. I said I got urgent work in the morning. My boss called me on short notice. She bought it. But my family keeps saying I was in the wrong for threatening them. So am I the asshole for the way that I reacted? Today I fucked up driving my date to her friend's house. Last night, I went on what could be described as the shortest and saddest Tinder date ever. The girl was really cute and seemed really interested in getting to know me. She was so keen to hang out with me that she suggested I pick her up at her place. I agreed. Cut to us driving in my car. She was even more attractive in person. Conversation was not an obstacle either. We were having a good time until she told me to drive her to a location that was not our date location. It was a friend's house. There was something of hers that the friend had which she needed back. The house happened to be on our way, so I didn't really mind. When we got there, she went inside while I waited in the driveway. I waited for about 10 minutes before I sent my first message requesting an update. No response. Eventually, I called, but still nothing. Finally, I decided to walk up to the house and knock on the door. A tall guy answered the door. Good looking, tattoos. Classic case of not the kind of guy girls bring home to their parents type. He asked if I wanted to come in and said I'm actually waiting for my date to come out so we could leave. He told me she's not coming out anytime soon because she's having sex with his roommate. I don't know what my facial expression was at that moment, but Tattooed Guy decided to hug me without warning and said he used to fuck her too, and based on his experience, there's better pussy out there. Not gonna lie, I did shed a tear or two on my way home. This morning, I received a message from my so-called date. In the message, she blamed the striking Uber drivers in my country for forcing her to find other ways of getting car rides. I deleted her number without responding. Am I the asshole for dropping the, we're not having kids, now stop bringing it up bomb on my mother-in-law? My husband and I don't want kids. My mother-in-law is big into family in the traditional sense. She has always been pushy about us having kids since we got married. Literally, the week after we got engaged, she started asking. My husband has always changed the subject and has even told her that it's really none of her business. Every time we see her, she asks. Everything we do is built around the idea of us having kids. Three years into our marriage, my husband said we might not even have kids and my mother-in-law would not hear it. At year four, my husband had a vasectomy and I had a tubal. 
So this weekend we were all at their home enjoying some barbecue and drinks and everything. When I get up to grab a beer, my mother-in-law asked me if maybe I should drink water instead because wink, 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 nudge, nudge, you know now. I was annoyed by this and said, there's really no chance. My mother-in-law's all-wide grin said, oh, come on, it's time for you two to finally get serious. Put down the beer and tell us when we can finally expect you two to make your family official. My mother-in-law gets real annoyed and says, well, you won't be real, uses the last name, until you bless us with babies. My husband said, mom, enough. My mother-in-law pushed again and my husband repeated. After about 15 minutes of the usual comments, I finally snapped and said, mother-in-law, part two. Am I the asshole for dropping the, we're not having kids, now stop bringing it up bomb on my mother-in-law? I finally snapped and said, mother-in-law, husband got snipped, I had my tubes tied. We're not having kids, you need to stop bringing it up, period. Well, I thought I started World War III. She started crying and stormed off. Family looked at us with disgust and stormed off to comfort her. We left. The party kind of ended and the social media bullshit started shortly after. Vague posts, links about how motherhood is a woman's greatest calling, articles about how unhappy childless women are, etc. Some meme about how, I guess I wasn't a good enough mother, so I won't be graduating to grandmother. It's obnoxious to the point I just muted all of them. My mother-in-law finally called me this morning and told me that she was willing to put all of this behind us if my husband and I came over and listened to her reasons that we really needed to have kids. I told her no and that we were tired of being pushed into this. And she said, well then, I guess you two aren't really prepared to be real. I'd like a refund for what I paid for the wedding. It wasn't that much, like $400 for the rehearsal dinner. I hung up on her. So am I the asshole? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm currently on unpaid maternity leave and my husband is still expecting me to pay half of the bills. Story time. So I should start off by saying me and my husband are expecting our first kids and oh my god are we excited. We actually found it really really difficult to get pregnant so obviously when that came out it was positive. We're just over the moon. So my husband actually makes four times the amount I do. I'm on just under 70k and he's on just under 300k. And whilst we were trying so hard to get pregnant, we kind of had the conversation as to what was going to happen once we did. However, we actually never fully came to a decision. Obviously, I mentioned I do not mind working right up into the birth. Like, I really don't mind as I do work from home quite a bit. However, my husband, who we're going to call Mark, just so you guys can follow this story a bit easier. Mark was literally insisting Make that I kind of took much me. maternity leave off Plus as well. Giveaway. For that reason, I took voluntary unpaid maternity leave. My husband was like, we can like do without the money. Like it's not like we need it. He said he would much rather me be at home, get ready to bring the kids home, start preparing to be like a full-time mum. So obviously during this time, I was doing like parenting classes. I was getting the nursery ready. I was painting the nursery. To be honest, I was just getting so excited to welcome our little baby girl to the world. And the way my husband gets paid is he gets paid in quarterly. So what we normally do then is we then, he gets paid, we split all the bills and pay them bills for that quarterly if that makes sense so the time came for the first quarterly since i had taken unpaid maternity leave so what we normally do is we normally sit down at dinner and kind of organize it all together i'll pay half the bills he'll pay half the bills and all our money goes into one pot and he said to me where's my contribution basically and i was just really confused i was like um i've kind of not been making an income but as i said didn't mind not going on a huge maternity leave anyway of course this like caused an argument so i basically said to him like oh my god that's like completely fine if you feel like that i'll go back to work and then he had a go at me for wanting to go back to work i don't know to be honest i'm just really confused am i the asshole for getting mad my artist hid their initials in my tattoo this is a short one names change for privacy i went to a tattoo shop in my area with the photo of the tattoo i wanted it was one my dad had gotten to honor my past grandfather, whose father also had it. But the point is, it was important to me that the tattoo looks exactly as it did in the photo. I get to the shop, I explain everything. I pay, get the tattoo, and we're done. I think it looks awesome, everything is great. Until a few weeks later when I show my great-grandmother the tattoo. She's static, grabs my arm to look at it and compliment it, then asks, who's AJ? I ask her what she means, and she points out the tattoo where the initials A and J or maybe T were hidden in the tattoo. I'm instantly pissed, as my artist name is Alice Trevor. She tries to assure me it's no big deal if I hadn't noticed it till now, but I still reached out to the artist sort of irritated. They told me the style of art I got is called traditional and it's pretty trad for all artists who do that style to do it. I demanded a partial refund and they refused, so I complained to the owner who made the artist give me a full refund. Now the artist is running a full smear campaign, talking about moving shops and all kinds of crap. My sister says I'm an asshole for pushing the issue, 
but I feel like at the end of the day, I told you exactly what I wanted and you didn't do that. Am I the asshole? Today, I fucked up by having a Tinder girl over at my place. I am a 21 male and a few days ago, I met this girl on Tinder. We were getting along really well and viking right away. After talking for a little bit, I decided to invite her over to my place to hook up. So two days ago, I was chilling at home and she came over. We were hanging out, had some drinks, and eventually hooked up. I didn't think much of it, as I thought it was going to be a hookup and I wouldn't talk with her anymore after it. The next day I get up and she's blowing up my phone with messages that she wants to hang out again and keep talking. I wasn't expecting this and just ignored the messages from her. Well, yesterday I had some friends and family over at my place and all of a sudden I get a knock on my door and it's her wanting to talk. It was frustrating because the people at my house had no idea who she was and I had to talk to her. I explained to her that I'd rather we stop talking and thought she would be done with me after that. I fucked up by taking her to my place and not a hotel. Now I feel like she's just going to keep coming back to my place.